Hi. What's up, Glenn? Nothing. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> What's up with you? Um, I th uh, I I figured um, I guess you're away from the from the barn, uh, or I mean hey. away from the phone. I guess you were away from the phone when I called you. When yeah, we called I was you. Uh, filling up my tire to mm. get back. Mm. Anyways, I'm gonna have to go in the house and change phones because this one isn't gonna hear you. Mm. So okay. we're on the way to the house. You <laughs> can continue with whatever you're doing for another five minutes. Okay. Okay. I keep the line open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you hear like any just like like static or um, low quality in, in this phone? Or? Cause I I use this phone. Yeah, you sound fine. Loud and clear. I sound loud and clear to you, but like, how does Glenn sound? He, he didn't sound as he sounded about uh like Low? sixty percent. Right. There's not. I know it's nothing I'm doing. I know it's nothing. I don't know. I don't know about what what talk show could be doing, but I think it's like his phone or something, something like it. Yeah, I think it's. I don't know. It could be. A, it could be when you're splitting the call because you're doing a three-way call, so it's it's being split. Or they're just messing with them. You know, either way. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, man. Hopefully yeah. your phone will like create some type of um once like I've heard it like like you know I'm looking at the audio, you know and I'm yeah. editing it. It's like you'll see like like in the in the in the uh, I don't know what they call it, like a bandwidth or frequency or whatever. You'll see it like jump up when you know, like like it's like something will um in your phone. I've seen that like it look like make some loud annoying noise and you won't hear what's being said when that noise is and, um, yeah. I think sometimes your phone may malfunction once in a while. Talking about my phone? Yeah, your phone does that. My, I remember. Okay, I'm gonna switch phone. Okay. Okay. Do you hear me now? Yeah, we hear yep. you. That one's louder. Yeah, I, um, a lot of times, like on phone calls, um, you 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 sound lo lower. So, like when I hear the, the audio. Probably the new phone. new phone sounds lower, uh -huh. but you can hear it at a further distance from the house. The mm. old phone sounds louder, but it doesn't go as far. Uh. So i got to try and find one that can sound louder or further. <laughs> but there's a law against that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. for a house phone, you can't broadcast to your neighbors. Yeah. You don't I hear Panasonic's are pretty good. Hey? I hear Panasonic's are pretty good. Well, the one thing I found about Panasonic is they have terrible ergonomics. Yeah. It's Try to walk around with it in your shirt pocket or your pants pocket. Or it's always dialing on its own. <laughs> uh, <laughs> keep hearing beep, and all of a sudden, yeah, there it goes. You have to find it in your pocket and turn it off again. But there's no no switch to keep it from from uh, ringing on its own. You know that. 
you could yeah. block it off when you're done or something. Right, yeah. They look good. <laughs> Some work better than others. I don't know if it's the price or not. I bought these at uh, Costco. Mm -hmm. They were the second most expensive Panasonic. For some reason, I just can't buy the most expensive. Because <laughs> <laughs> even though it's only about twenty bucks or something, yeah, probably worth better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what's, what's is you gotta buy them to find out whether they work well or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you just um, can you just keep the receipt, and if it doesn't work well, can you return it? You could do that if you live next to the store. Oh, how far is it? From? It's in Ottawa, so oh wow, <laughs> about twenty five bucks to go. So, do you have to go to Ottawa for like a lot of the things that you need? Like, well, I don't, but most people do. Oh, okay. Most people who live around here and are not farmers work in Ottawa. Uh, so it's a 50-kilometer trip morning and night, 100 kilometers a day. It's about 66 miles or so. It's a lot of gas money. <laughs> a lot of gas money. Is it a 6.0 going? Is that why? Yeah. Well, the gas is now buck twenty a liter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's more expensive. That's a bottle of wine. That's a liter. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, yeah. um, it's more expensive in Canada. Yeah, and our dollar yeah. is now a dollar four American. Uh, so we're paying more and getting less. <laughs> Yeah, that's the name of the game. <laughs> yeah. That's how they keep immigrants from coming to Canada, unless they're on welfare, uh, like the uh, Sri Lankans and, and Iranians. That way they can pay their way. I did a study once about how uh, people from uh, Africa and... Uh, the uh, uh, Middle Eastern area come to Canada with no money, no training, no occupation, nothing. Welfare and get more money than the aged get in Canada per month. They get a an apartment. Uh, Something at the time was around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars a month, while the age were getting nine hundred dollars a month. <laughs> they have very specific people they want here. For whatever reason, they have to be Muslims. Maybe they'll be used as scapegoats. That's what they seems. Yeah. They've been useful. Islam, because there is no L, in French is the word ami, mm -hmm. friends. Friends of the system. And you said that the Islam wants to basically rule the world, like... Um, well, everybody's doing a good job of letting them. Yeah. Um, and the people that are converted it's like they seem to think that's like the way it should be for everybody well they're in a bag yeah. and and that's what they want Hadrons in a bag uh, that's what the burqa is red sack yeah. or black sack whatever Whenever they use that bag symbolism, it, it indicates that they want to change life, right? They want to, yeah. Uh, it's, it means a, a total change because quarks 
uh, are in bags called hadrons, and as long as they stay where they are, life can't change. Yeah. So if you uh, if you collide them in a collider and bust the bags, they end up for a split second out in the open, and the first thing they do is try to find a new bag to hide in. The minute they do that, of course, they're, they're changing the structure of cells, and that means there will be a different kind of life. So when they talk about bags, they're talking about changing the structure of life. And the only way to do that is to get rid of all the other life that was there previously. Yeah. Well, that's the easiest way because that way you don't get any arguments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, the the new life that they've been fighting for since the Egyptians built the pyramids is an A. In the symbolism, it's male and female touching at the heads and linked together in the middle. So it's uh, three and one. And that's why every Christian goes to church and prays and says amen at the end of every prayer. Mm. They're praying for their own demise. Akhenaten it, 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 changed it to A-10 because he said they got to, these A's have to bring in 10 new elements in their structure in mm. order to provide the best place possible. So what do you think is the uh, Atman? Because it has A in it too in the beginning and it has a T transmission. At what? I didn't hear At, that. Atman. And the Hindu. Uh, Spell it for me. A T M A N. Well, that's eight man. Uh. Eight means eight elements, but in the end they've decided that male is not a good structure mm. uh, to market whatever it is you want to market so you can take what the people have. Uh, so the male has been relegated to infrastructure to be the infrastructure of the body, while ten elements will be added through the uh, Neanderthaler aspects of the uh, control mechanism. And uh, female is the porcelain or veneer on the outside. Everybody on the planet in uh, in a period starting a thousand years after this century, everybody that walks on the surface of the planet will, for all intents and purposes, appear to be a woman, but in fact will be an A-man, A-man. At this stage of the game, some women, not the majority of uh, career-type women, at least, um, are, are now known as we-men. Or yes, ma'am. We oui is yes in French. We oui means small in Irish. Uh, yeah. uh, how many, um, like percentage-wise, um, do you think like uh, uh, women with the original like DNA are still working on the surface of the planet? I don't know, George. You have to. Uh, live or work with them for a while to to be certain yeah. that they're not uh, you know lesbians are not what I'm talking about women mm -hmm. uh, ordinary women are not 
I don't know what percentage of those two still make up the population of the Earth. I suspect not many of them are presidents of their countries or uh, uh, secretaries of state. or presidents of uh, Hewlett-Packard. So what are they using, these other models of women? Like well, they're, they're testing each of the elements. Mm -hmm. So you can have uh, an original woman with uh, one element in it, the medulla, for example. Or you can have one with... Uh, ground positioning device uh, genetically based and implanted in the breast. You could have a, uh, a woman who's testing out a, a pituitary gland, the third eye, but there are none, as far as I can tell, that have the whole ten units. Uh, the the strangest one is, of course, the return to the pineal gland function of uh, taking oxygen out of water, and therefore the woman would need to have a gill. And to have a gill, of course, the, the symbol is mermaid, part fish. Yeah, but all the part fish, it seems like... It would all be done in secret, behind closed doors. It wouldn't be done openly, well, I, like, I think, uh, like the you Olympics. You probably yeah. have a good hint when you hear George Bush talk about a thousand points of light. Mm -hmm. If you travel the St. Lawrence Seaway between Ogdensburg and Kingston, you'll islands. see a thousand islands. Mm -hmm. They're just basically a piece of rock with a house on it. And, and usually they're lit up at night. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, that that type of place would be the perfect location for uh, raising and testing what we call mermaids. Of course, they don't look like mermaids with a fish tail. That's only a symbolic and allegory. They would look like ordinary women, but someplace on them, and, and I suggest it has to be fairly close to to the lungs, so your your basic location has to be someplace between the cleavage and the throat. Mm -hmm. A bikini would do a good job of hiding it. And that's is, that's the according to the plan. That's the last. Um, is that the last model of? Uh, yeah. Well, all of the pieces are basically designed by by the people who worked with Dr. Wilder Penfield mm -hmm. and Cameron. All those other. There, there seems to be about a dozen to two dozen different doctors at different times, and and they've. Um, made Tucson the center in Arizona for the United States, a follow-up to the Montreal Neurological Institute. I suspect that the guy who shot the congresswoman was all a setup. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's the same people. All of the people that We've trained, uh, trained we've, that we've uh, discovered uh, mm -hmm. having their training in Arizona seem to be uh, devotees of a guru called Wilder Penfield. Now, when you Wilder say is just another way of saying the word Walter and Alter. 
Okay. When, when you say guru, um, well, it's it was more than just science to uh, Penfield. He was a follower of René Descartes and dualism. Really? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I didn't look into him that. Uh, and what did you find from uh, what's the name René Descartes? From what? What did you find? What did you discover? F- this well, person? that that was basically his philosophy: is everything has to be dual, that mono doesn't function properly. So he said, "Look at look at the body and uh, lungs, two of them, uh, uh, ventricles in the heart, two feet, two legs, mm-hmm. two." sides to the brain. Everything is two in the body and there's only uh, one thing that lands that may come as just singles. Mm-hmm. That's, that was basically the beginning of the single. Therefore, he suggests everything should be two and if if you're improving, then it should be three, and the three should be made of more than just the actual living person, but also incorporate the technology uh, that is available to geneticists to add elements. That's why when when you use uh, ritual, pain, fear, mm-hmm. uh, you build altars, uh, alternative alternatives to you who carry those specific memories. Uh, uh, that's why Walt Disney is called Walter. Yeah. So... Fear has been used for thousands of years. Yeah, it's a marker. Yeah. It's like markers on the road, you know. And that, and that word, um, I guess it could be like a coded word, too. I remember when I was in middle school, it was a big thing. People used to wear these shirts with two eyes looking at you. Or no. Not all the shirts were maybe two eyes, but it was a brand called No Fear. Yeah, well, think think about it. It's got ear in it, just mm-hmm. like the word earth and mm-hmm. the word heart. You know, I was just looking at a guy named uh, Nikola Tesla on TV show, and they said that he first was the first to create like a type of conductor in the earth, using the earth as a well, conductor. Tesla worked for Rockefellers and Rothschilds. So yeah, exactly. You never know for sure what the hell. They had the, yeah. They could be working on anything and and tell you something else. So I never believe. No, when I seen that, I I just said okay. Like I remember you saying the air, and like how they you could use the earth as some type of mechanism that seemed to be linked to that. So. Yeah. Well, if if you're building a geodesic structure mm-hmm. as tunnels in the Moho discontinuity, you're communications would be from the center of the earth to the outer edge and therefore anything that listens in on the surface for your benefit whether they have a heart or an ear they are standing on a listening mechanism called the earth earth what you're missing there most of all is the ability to see. Mm-hmm. And now it appears as if because of the pituitary gland uh, being the original eye, plant life, animal life that had no vision, no need for vision, but had a starter uh, in the bottom of the ocean, uh, they could detect things and make images in the dark, 
it is uh, most likely, I would say, pretty sure. Uh, can't de divulge all of the things I've been told, but I suspect that your two eyes are a growth out of the pituitary gland. They still have retain a connection. So what they see gets seen by the pituitary gland. And now we know that it has its own equivalent to a telephone number in genome. Uh, it can be contacted and an image can be uploaded through either cybernetics to a satellite or downloaded to the Earth and reconstructed at the other end, just like voice is in an analog system or digital system, TV, so that what you see, if you're, you've been adjusted properly by Wilder Penfield or his group, could be uh, at the same time playing on a TV screen. <laughs> and what Penfield was doing, of course, is proving that it's possible by creating known benchmarks. So you can, um, is it like a live type of thing, or it's after you die, or it's, it's, it's like a live feed, you think? Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Even your dreams. I've recorded. Wow. Yeah. You got to remember, our technology is uh, 300 years old. 350, 360 years old. That's mm -hmm. basically what we're dealing with when we. Uh, Include the mechanical side of things, the, the machinery and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we know for certain that to do genetic engineering, you have to have a computer. So since hermaphrodites were shown by Neanderthaler how to become genders, two and one, you have to believe that there was some kind of computer available in 80,000 B.C. Now, take 80,000 plus 2,000, 82,000 years of developing technology. What do you think that would compare with something we were helped to develop in 350 years? Yeah. Smaller much number much. of people, however, you know, slower project, but 82,000 years is one hell of a long time. Yep. Yeah. An ice age, 16,000 years. From 24,000 to 8,000 BC, they're basically working on the project of how they're going to control the Earth once they reestablish it, see how they made it look as if it was really step by step solution of the tools we work with mm -hmm. so they could make money at every level. In fact, they could have introduced technology in 8000 B.C. that would have far surpassed anything that we know Today. was out there, and maybe they did. I think that's what uh, like their group called the Atlanteans. Yeah. I think they, they had something. Yeah. They were like... That made fire look like fire. 
<laughs> compared to what they really could do in lasers and that type of technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're basically being led, spoon-fed. Do you think anybody had uh, access to that on the surface? Well, Cro-Magnon would. Yeah. Cro-Magnon is the servant of the Neanderthalers and thus the computers and to do that the word says crow so they are the blackbird mm-hmm. uh, blackbird a crow is known as the most intelligent in, in the bird species before humans that make tools ma Chroma means it gave birth probably to uh, in in a process that leads to humans the kind of brains humans have and gnon means gnostic or wisdom so Cro Magnon had it. And Cro-Magnon downgraded the next batch, which they called Roma, gypsies, wanderers, travelers, so that they would cover the entire surface of the earth. So their main function was just to the Explore. gypsies, was to cover the surface. Yeah, find out you, what's there. Yeah, because you They'll see be today. Back later. Mm-hmm. You look around for a thousand years or two thousand or five thousand, and when we come back, let us know where everything is so we don't have to waste any time. Today, now it seems like um, they get like um, like I was told, like gypsies, they they do a lot of stealing and stuff like that. Um, is there like any particular reason they're made to be? Like that, because when you read around, they say, "Oh, they're untrustworthy and all that stuff." Like, like, is, Which is that group a better? Are you talking about, George? Like, I'm talking about like gypsies, right? Like, why? Why yeah. is it that they have this? Yeah, well, they, there's a lot of things that uh, uh, the controllers want to have, and the people who have it don't want to give it. Mm. So you need a team of uh, people whose uh, morals may may not be the same as uh, Caucasians, for example, or Africans, who are more linked to the ground, to the earth. Caucasians mm. are more linked to technology and stuff. So in the sky. <laughs> if you have the mafia or gypsies in in a smaller sense, they can get into places and get uh, information that the system needs and wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Mm. Yes. It's yeah. just another job for them. Yes. You know, morals uh, is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Uh, there's a totally different morality looking at uh, Arabs, for example, or, uh, or uh, natives, the Ida natives like that uh, who have the potlatch ceremonies. That mm-hmm. They don't own things. I saw uh, also a, a prince Saudi Arabia once being interviewed about how they, they've cut off the hands of thieves. And he said, you know, you guys misunderstand what that means because anybody who takes anything in your society that they didn't buy themselves is called a thief. We don't think that way. We think more along the lines of 
if there's something that's available and is needed as a tool to do something, the person who has it is not using it, then another person who needs it uses it. So he said, if I put my cell phone down on the desk and you walk out with it, we don't call that theft. He said, I've been the prince of this area for years, 30 years, as a matter of fact, and he said, I have never seen anyone condemned to lose a hand, and I'd have to know because I'd be the judge. So don't mix up your morals with theirs, he was saying. On the other hand, natives who do the potlatch ceremony make sure that every time they have the ceremony, I don't know if it's yearly or what it is, but occasionally they give away everything they own. But of course, since everybody does the same thing, nobody goes home empty-handed. <laughs> yeah. You just have different things. Yeah. And all these morals that everybody has, these established morals, they seem to serve something else, you know, bigger than the. the yeah, they were people. invented by priests. Yeah. For the purpose of saying. I'm going to own everything, so don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. If you saw the piece that uh, Jenny put on on uh, the banker, stockbrokers, and the nuns this week, mm -hmm. uh, nuns probably have more money as a group than anybody in the entire world. Because they don't spend it. Mm -hmm. Now, what are Sorry. what are sisters of charity? Oh yeah, I've heard of them. Doing with millions and millions of dollars, while poor people wander the streets of the world. Oh, yeah, sisters of charity uh, is 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 stock, and that's probably linked to. Yeah, it looks, starts at home for them. <laughs> I, I was thinking of, uh, you know, Santa Claus's bag. Like, um, you know, you got people put things in, in stock things. Or, yeah, well, think, think about stocks, mm -hmm. you know. It's just organized theft. Yeah. <laughs> at best, you could call it gambling. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not the stockbroker that pays the interest or the increase in the value that a person has in their portfolio. It's mm -hmm. other people who lose. Yeah. yeah. When they lose, the banker, the stockbroker, takes a cut. When they win, the mm -hmm. banker, stockbroker, takes a cut. <laughs> so... It's not a matter that the nuns are being charitable. They're just complaining that they're not making enough money from losers. <laughs> not the stockbroker's money. You know, the stockbroker is just paying himself commissions, ridiculous commissions, but commissions nonetheless. What the winnings are or the losses are are theft from another person. When they're the losers, they complain. <laughs> yeah. When they're the winners, you never hear them complain. But the fact is, how does that concept marry into what they believe in or claim to believe in? They they are supposed to be surviving, you know, just enough to survive on. Right. There are fewer and fewer of them every year, and they have more and more money. 
<laughs> and when a woman comes to the gate and says, look, I, I'm unexpectedly uh, having to stay with no links to my husband because I'm being stopped from crossing the border, um, would it be possible for you to provide me with a safe place to stay during that period in time? Something in the way of communication? Tell me to have a telephone line so I can speak to my husband. You know, they, it's not like they have no place. They've got tons and tons of rooms that are being maintained. Who's paying rent on these rooms? So that done and say no, you don't do that. Excuse me, what is it that you were set up for? Or at least, what is it you say you were set up for? Didn't you say that you were there to help the poor, to help those in trouble? Is it only for women that they offer that to? Well, at hospitals, they, they had men. Lodging seem to be mostly women. Could could be combination, but I, I would imagine it's mostly for women. I want. I, I would like to see what would happen if I um asked them if I could stay there. Yeah. You think they would refuse me? Well, I, everybody should ask. <laughs> yeah. Only one way to find out. Yeah. And then you won't be left with the illusion yeah. that they uh, they are something that they say they are something that they are the furthest away from. They're just uh, an accumulating virus. <coughs> they accumulate from others and it causes poverty, and then they claim to be assisting the poor. <laughs> they're not assisting the poor, or they're assisting the poor to make money to give to them. Yeah. Especially if they're not releasing any of the money. <laughs> they keep orphanages, they charge the state, which means the people. Mm -hmm. We pay them so they can genetically engineer people. Yeah. And make our lives worse. You know, every group of nuns could be examined by a nutter and find out exactly what their net worth is. And then you would say, uh, your, your vows say this, will leave you with the amount that matches the vows you say you take and put the rest into the coffers of the state so that people can be taken off the street. Hospitals can operate like hospitals, not like bank accounts. fear the most in Jenny because by being uh, ritually abused by the gang surrounding Wilder Penfield they created in her an altar a number of altars which they could then use as programs to make her here on TV with their people and answer the questions that they wanted answered all fed through the remote control programming that she was put under. But when she came out of that state, she 
began to think normally again, she could figure out she had been used. And like, how, like, was it safe to come out of that state? No, it wasn't safe. It never is because nobody wants to be your friend because you are then considered to be an eccentric. No, no, I'm saying, what does it take to come out of that that state of um, age? What experience? Experience okay. knowledge that you gain from what we talked about the other time about getting three shots at each experience. Mm -hmm. If you don't learn it the first time, hopefully you learn the second. But if you don't learn it the third time, you're heading for senility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the three strikes rule. Yeah. What do they mean in that game, too? Um, I forgot to ask you the other day. What do they mean when, when you get a home run? What's the home run all about? A home run means that you have started on the first project, figured everything out mm. from the first project so that you can then start your life over again based on knowing more. Oh, I know someone who used to refer to themselves as a home run. Yeah. Hang on a second. I'll be back in a minute. Who's there? Who's there on the, on the line? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. So what was it you had to talk about, Leo? I'll ask you once uh, Glenn's done talking. Hello? Yeah. You learn one thing when you get older. Old man got a pee. <laughs> okay. Any questions before uh, I get back to work? I think um I think Neil has a question, I'm not sure. I had a question directed uh for you, Jared. For me, okay. Yeah. Remember the email I sent you? Uh, it was about serving. Did you read it? Um, I read the f the first like part, like the beginning of it. You, I, I I I think I got the gist of it. You said something. It's 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 so bleak to serve creator creation. You said right. And I forgot what the question was. The question was why serve in the first place. Um, why what? Serve. Why serve in the first place? I still don't hear that. Um, he's saying why serve creation or creator in the first place is what he's asking. Why is it servitude, I guess, is what he's trying to say. Yeah, it, well, you serve either yourself or you serve someone else. But... Serving oneself is not, in my view, the best. Anyways, the question wasn't addressed to me. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, for me personally, I don't think um, really have a a choice. Like, um, I mean, I guess yeah, you do have a choice, but it just seems for me wiser <laughs> because I, you know, I don't have the whole picture. 
um, at least not yet, you know. And you know, I haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been around so long, you know. And um, to serve a creator, you know, which I know lives, you know, in fourth dimension, and it's headed for its like own destruction. Why would I want to serve that? Yeah, but, but, but something that created me created the whole universe. I mean, I don't know. But I think it's hands down who I would choose to serve. You serve a process, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> process is the advancement of the human race based upon a set of principles that are true and and not hypocrisy. Self-serving well, is not the best way to spend one's life. Yeah, because it seems to, um, like, the ends that, from what I see, creation, the ends, it always seems to serve the whole, so... I mean, yeah. It, it just seems more sensible to me to serve serve the whole rather than just serve myself or serve it. It's a forever evolving, self-cleansing kind of thing, so, you know. It's weeding out the bad stuff. But maybe, what, what, do you have a problem with the word serve? Is that why? Is that, like, is this... Uh, I don't have a problem with the word serve. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what's the purpose behind creation's process. I want to get to the bottom of it. What is it merely to experience through us? And if so, why? Because if it, if we are going to be the basis of the next universe, then we have to come with the experiences gained through trial and error. From and what that I understand. memory bank is in your DNA, and if you haven't experienced it, then you don't have it. So Creation can make things perfect, but it doesn't mean that the individuals living in there could be, in fact, creations of their own environment at some time in the future doing things right for a change. Mm. seems to me when this first, uh, this earth first had human beings, what was provided was all the necessities to survive and, and allow one to expand on their knowledge because they weren't linked to work for someone else. They worked by exploiting their talents. And each of the talent uh, would be a different brick in the wall to a society that functions for their benefit. Once it got hijacked and became adore me, it, it lost all of its common sense. Why do you think creation made it where we would have to consume another life to continue living? Imagine if humans weren't on the top of the food chain and you had a different organism that needed to eat us to survive. Well, who says there isn't? Well, um, I don't refer to Neanderthalers. I'm just referring to, uh, in a natural setting, let's say in a jungle. All it is is life. Its form is irrelevant. Creation wants to allow life to exploit its own capabilities by learning from each experience and gaining that as intuition. Whether at some time in the future we look like us or look like something else that's irrelevant it's did we learn 
the real lesson of life on earth. Creation gave, creator takes. That's the lesson. So what I see is that the purpose creation has is to simply live and to make living better. And lost control by giving freedom. And said, basically, ask me what you want, and I'll give it to you. And some idiot said, I want it all. Creation said, anybody else? No. Okay, there you are. You have just given away your unit of political power to an individual who will gradually steal the air out of your nostrils mm. step by step. Now, is that a lesson worth learning? I think so. Yeah. Is it a lesson worth disappearing from the planet for not learning it? I think so. Does it mean that you can be an accumulator without control over your accumulation and call yourself human? I don't think so. So, Glenn, the people that n know what's going on yet don't do anything to prevent it or to at least uh, stop it, you're saying that creation would, in a sense or in an allegory, put them in a purgatory. Move them down the chain uh, so that they cannot ever again be in a position to do damage to others. Yeah, I was talking about Either that. Permanently with, or temporarily. I was I was talking about that with um, Dana, like with, with slugs and stuff. You notice that, like you say, that salt is, you know, DNA, but for some reason the salt kills the slug and doesn't allow it to to live. Who's the biggest hypocrite in the world? The person who calls himself therapist. And and when you understand the word in, in English, it's the rapist. Yeah. The rapist of your mind. Yeah. And who are we judged by? If you go to if you go to court, and they say you're eccentric, we think you should have a thirty day examination. Who's going to do that examination? But a psychiatrist, the biggest rapist of them all, yeah. the drug pusher, is going to tell the judge that you are in sanity or out of it, yeah. that you are centered or eccentric, that you are conventional or non-conventional. Where does the biggest rapist of them all get that authority? From a university, a place where a bunch of stupid people teach stupid things? Yes. That, that's enough to make me puke, mm -hmm. just to think of it. That people would be so stupid as we go to school, pay thousands of dollars to be told that a rapist is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So I mean, there's got to be a point where common sense in your brain clicks in. Yeah. Yeah, it gets me angry, like when I hear people like my own mother, like, "Oh, I'm gonna send you to a therapist." Like, it's like it's like second nature almost to people. It just if something doesn't fit into their illusion. I sat in a classroom in college, and I said to myself, what I, am I doing here? 
<laughs> that I'm doing here. That's what I said too. What what are they attempting to do mm -hmm. here? They're not teaching me anything of any value. They're just parking my body. Exactly. That's they what I said. They can give me a piece of paper that says I'm allowed to collect some of their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Up yeah. You know. <laughs> What happened? Thank you. Creation gave us, you know, freedom. You have a talent, go exploit it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I gave you a talent. Every one of the people in the world have a talent, whether they know it or not. If they look, they'll find it. That's where they should be, in fact, spending their time is exploiting that talent. And there shouldn't be somebody that says, hmm, I don't like your talent, so therefore you're not allowed to live. Sure. You must live on the street. No, no it's, it's totally the system looks at it. Is, is it profitable for the system? Is can they make profit from it? You know? Yeah. Can they steal another piece out of you? Just look at all the professionals: accountants, lawyers, doctors, municipal people, provincial, state, government. Who lives best? The people who are, in fact, doing the work or the people who make rules and regulations? Yeah. Who's got the best? Hello? In the media, they lie all the time. Who's in charge of the media? Do they call them moguls for nothing? <laughs> mm. Doesn't it sound like rape and pillage? Yeah. Mo okay. Mongols yep. and moguls are not too far apart. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ask Mr. Berlusconi. And he's just the public one. They're all the same. There has to come a time when people stop in their lives. Somewhere between the age of 40 and 60, I suggest, and say, do the things I see with my eyes, hear with my ears, make sense? Do I want to be in sanity or out of it? Do, do I want to be centric or out of it? Do I want to be conventional or out of it? And you look at what's conventional, what's centric, what's sane. It's stupidity. Mm -hmm. exactly. At that stage of the game, you got to say, whoa, stop the merry-go-round. Let <laughs> me off. <laughs> But what they do, they they seem to exploit that 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 period before you hit forty and sixty, early twenties, late twenties, and they just that's when people do this, I guess, the stupidest things in their lives. They use that for you know, yeah. military, whatever. You know, they First thing they they do when you sit in a chair in the military is say, "You've got these antennas on your head." <laughs> that receive information. You're not allowed to receive information. All the information comes from your drill sergeant. Yeah, your so off with your hair. Yep. <laughs> you know? yeah. And and when you're uh, when you join the police force, is uh, you're not here to investigate. We're the ones stealing. We don't want you to investigate. <laughs> You're here to brown nose, grow a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. Da da da. <laughs> no. <laughs> if there's something wrong with a government that preaches, the biggest single problem we're going to have to deal with in the future is Alzheimer's. That's when mm. this whole political class is running around the country saying 
that Alzheimer's is the biggest single problem we're going to have to deal with, and the state can't handle it, and therefore caregivers must be allowed to take care of people in their own homes Uh-oh. because Uh-oh. that's cheaper. Okay? Now, nobody says anything about who induced the Alzheimer's. Yeah. Why did they induce the Alzheimer's? And you said they have But, ca- but because there's one person who knows how to handle Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. you keep her in Ogdensburg. The person that created a five-star hospital and was uh, given that five-star by the inspectors from the government, this is the way you guys should do it. But what do they do? They put her in Ogdensburg, and none of the hospitals there want to hire her because they're afraid they might lose their jobs. They would rather continue doing it the old-fashioned way, like you electric shock people. Mm -hmm. You make up chemical formulas in-house, and you give it to the people. That's that's how all the uh, illusions come about. And who runs that whole network? Nuns. Nuns. Why do they call the UN two letters from the word nun? (laughs) Because what you get is none. Period. What they get is everything. Yeah. You get none of that. They gave you a language so you would know, so that they wouldn't be alone laughing at you. <laughs> yeah. well. And then right away, and I was as guilty as anybody else, 20 years old, knew it all. Hey. It had to be beaten out of me to figure out that politics doesn't change anything. It's all an illusion it's to make you believe you have a role to play. Just like jury duty makes you believe you have a role to play. None of it is real. They change it any time they want. And you can't do anything about a court of appeal. You can't do anything about a Supreme Court. You can't do anything to a mother superior. Mm. He can travel across the border, bring in $50 bottle of wine, whatever she wants. Nobody even asks her for her picture just as long as they know she's a nun. And you're a director of nursing. You run a five-star Alzheimer home, and they won't let you in because you might be going to see your husband. How do you think that kind of thinking comes along? In Rigo, they have a training center for civil servants in Canada. And there's three stages. The first one is, are you physically able to do the job? The second one is, are you mentally capable of doing the job? And the third part is, are you psychologically in tune with what we want? Will you do what we want more than what you want? Mm -hmm. Will you be a sociopath on our behalf? If you pass all three, you're the highest paid. Mm-hmm. Will you go around the Internet preaching our religion? 
our religion is accumulation. You'll get your share if you preach our religion. Sorry. No, not interested. Tried it. Didn't like it. Would rather deal with goats, pigs, chickens. <laughs> they make more sense. They say, you know, I'm going to peck at some of this mash you throw out, and I'll give you an egg, and we'll be even. Mm-hmm. Or I'll help you in your communications network. Or I'll pass on some of my genetic knowledge as food for you. You are what you eat. Not yeah. what you were told in school. School is a place where you're parked after you learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. You're equipped to do your own search, not to get misled by a bunch of idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Call it higher learning. Well, the higher you go, the further away from reality you get. Look at the pyramids. They've told you. Down at the bottom there is the Sphinx. They're the big accumulators. We're the idiots stuff up in the clouds up here. Go underground and have a look. You'll see the network that allows them to accumulate. Roots, not leaves on a tree, accumulate. Mm. Anyway, unless there's something else, I gotta go. Give I some water to some animals and feed some others, because they're my teachers. Mm. You have to hear their servants. They serve me. <laughs> Trade. I get an education. They get fed. <laughs> Not a bad trade. <laughs> yeah. I don't say? have much time left. I'm approaching 70 years of age. Mm. The average person living in North America, I'm told, lives somewhere between 75 and 80 years of age, so got to get as much knowledge as I can before I go, and i got to leave as much to those who want to know before I go. Yeah. So yeah. we'll talk to you next weekend. Yeah, uh, I think Neil uh, uh, might have a question. Hey? Do you have time for one quick question? Sure. Okay, I wanted to ask, is the ultimate solution... Uh, in the hands of the masses, or is it in the hands of the critical uh, 13 we're going to have to communicate with creation? Now, if it is in the The only hands, job critical mass has, it's to ask creation to take back control away from creator and put it back in the hands of the people. That's, that's the job of the 13. Okay, because the other option would be uh, mass communication, and since that's not doable, since we can't communicate to the whole world, we would have to form a, a critical mass of 13 to communicate with creation. How, well, the, do you, how do you think we would do that? The problem with the media is networks. If you allowed all the local stations to tell you what's happening in their locality and you make up your mind as to what that means to your state, to your country, 
to your world. No group of people who are known as opinion makers would guide you in that process. You would just simply listen to the local and put the story together in your own mind. You have access to your brain. You have access to your intuition. All you need to know is the facts, not somebody's reinterpretation of the facts. Just the facts. <laughs> you know, as Joe used to say, <laughs> just the facts. Just the facts, man. And then, if you say, I do not feel equipped to do the job that would make the decisions, you don't. Don't vote just because they tell you you have to. If you're not qualified to make those decisions, don't vote on those items. But every item that is voted on by Congress should be voted on by some mass communications network where people can press a button and say, that's my view. You don't need to give your vote to a politician. The technology is there for you to express your feelings on every issue. But when not qualified, you stay put. Mind your own business. Yeah. They even do it on game shows, so why can't they do it in <laughs> the real world? You know? Media is the big problem. It is. It is. The ecclesiastic Freemasonry accumulators are the end product. Uh. But they can't do their job unless people stand in the middle and tell you, do what I say. And some do it politely. But that doesn't make it any different. It's do what's right and don't do what's wrong. You know what's right. You know what's wrong unless you're a sociopath. And there ain't enough of them to make a big difference if you let them alone. But everybody together today is being told, don't do what's right or wrong. Do what's safe. That's safe for you. That's what a medulla does. It could change how you think from right and wrong to safe or not safe. All media inspired. All media controlled. Hypocrites. Hippo. Look at the drawing of France. The second face after Portugal in their geography, how they cut out the boundary. It's a face of a hippo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites. Not hippocratic. <laughs> Hypocrites. That's media. <laughs> Tell it, or hear it from a guy who heard it directly from the media. Over my 70 years, I pulled their chain every chance I could so that I would see the response. I would ask them the embarrassing questions. It's funny how they agreed with me when they were unemployed and disagreed as soon as they got a job. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And how for three years I stood in front of my parliament buildings 
and I asked the people inside to stop stealing. For that, the media who have their own building across the street and used to walk by me get to the question period in Parliament at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 300 and some media from across the world began to switch sidewalks mm. and walk on the other side so they wouldn't have to hear the embarrassing questions. When I got the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff and four senators and four cabinet ministers charged with participating in a conspiracy, the media was dumbfounded. And they came out with stories that said, wait, he'll get his. Sure enough, as soon as the media said it, everybody in the media stopped writing the story. They got their orders, came down through their known members. Who were these people in the media who were following instructions to make certain that nobody would give any credit to a person who just asked them, please stop stealing? They were all members of secret society. All policemen, reporters, religious people, all members of secret society. Why do you think that a director? of a five-star psychiatric institution is not allowed to cross the border because they know that one plus one don't make two but make a much bigger number. critical mass. That's what they fear. Critical mass where creation says to creator, butt out. You've had your turn. You screwed it up. The universe is heading for a collision. It's expanding at a faster rate than you believed before, but it's also heading straight on for a head-on crash with Andromeda, just yeah. in case you haven't learned. Yeah. How those people who want to do it right tell me take back control and I will give you the time necessary 5,000 years. If you don't ask me to take back control, cleansing begins. One step at a time. Pakistan, Chile, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, all the centers of secret society. If you don't come soon, America. America, whose name comes from a Mongol leader called Tamerlane.
You'll be next. Canada too. Ka, ka, ka. Big shit of Turd Island, Canada. To be shrunk down the Canadian shield. It's all up to you guys. I've only got a few years left. You guys, if you survive, have time to buy 5,000 years. Good luck. Talk to you next time. Okay. Okay. Bye for now. All right.